Currently, the conventional EEG relies on highly specialized EEG technologists uh, for setup. EEG uh, technicians are uh, precious, uh, they are in shortage, they are overworked, underappreciated, and uh, of course they are human beings. They have to wake up in the middle of the night, they have to go to the bedside. If they are on site, they probably have other duties to do. They have to monitor EEGs. Um, continuous monitoring. So they have to label seizures for the epileptologist to come and review their labeling the next day. So they are very busy um, and um, it takes time for them to get to the bedside and start uh, connecting the patient to conventional EG system. Devices are uh, bulky, very expensive. A device like this um, costs tens of thousands of dollars. And you can't put them uh, in your pocket and run to the ED uh, uh, to do an emergency recording. Um, you have to haul them from one place to another. Certainly, you can't do any field recording with those uh, bulky machines. And then you have to wait for the neurologist uh, to get back to your pager and review the EEGs. That brings us to the unmet need, the problem. If we don't have a blood pressure cuff to measure some of these blood pressure if we don't have a rapid EEG at the bedside to make the diagnosis of non-convulsive seizures, what do we do as doctors? Well, unfortunately, it's a maze that we have to go through. Many of us uh, treat our patients empirically. Is my patient seizing? What should I do? Uh, do I suspect seizures? Should I treat the patient with anti-seizure medications? Did the medication stop the patient's seizure? Did I treat the patient accurately? Empiric treatment of non-convulsive seizure is a pervasive problem in the culture of neurological practice of today for the following reason. Imagine we have been called to the bedside to make a diagnosis. We go there, we kind of have a suspicion that the patient might be having non-convulsive seizures. More than 50% of the time, we are suspecting that the patient is seizing or maybe seizing and therefore we tend to empirically treat them with anti-seizure medications. Well, not all of those patients that I treated uh, could be having non-convulsive seizures or non-convulsive status epilepticus. So majority of those in fact are not seizing but I tended to but I decided to treat them. And minority of patients that I did not treat are in fact seizing and I decided not to treat because I didn't have high suspicion. So this culture of empiric treatment basically leads to over-treatment or unnecessary treatment of our patients that we have been consulted on and it also has the risk of missing many seizures and or under-treating those cases where um, I had suspicion. And this has not only economic and financial problems for the hospital because I overtreated the patient or I unnecessarily admitted the patient to the ICU, but also it has a potential risk for the patient uh, and the patient's brain that I left some of them in non-convulsive status epilepticus uh, for many hours. In those cases where I left them in seizure or I treated them uh, with significant delay, there is evidence uh, that uh, these patients um, have lower response rate for first-line medications. Usually these first-line medications are a lot cheaper uh, and if I delayed the diagnosis, um, basically I uh, make the hospital go with very expensive treatments for these patients, prolonged hospitalization and so on. The cost is a major issue for the healthcare, the suffering of the patient and their families, complication of missing uh, seizures, and complication of unnecessary treatment, intubations, ICU admissions, and so on. Brain injury is a problem that we cannot ignore, especially when it comes to non-convulsive status epilepticus. We need to detect them as early as possible and treat them. So given the problem of empiric treatment, we need a rapid response EEG that would make EEG accessible by anyone, anywhere, and anytime.
Rapid response uh, EEG system uh, consists of uh, two parts. One is the headband system, which is disposable. It can be reused on the same patient, but it shouldn't be used across patients. And the pocket size EEG recorder. Both of them have been FDA cleared. And for those of you interested in sensitivity and specificity of 10 electrode system in this circumferential manner, versus 16 plus uh, electrodes, I refer you to a study that Brandon Westover from Massachusetts General Hospital in collaboration with my team and Larry Hirsch at Yale conducted. And also for those of you interested in knowing how this 10 electrode system will make a major impact in diagnostic assessment and therapeutic decision making, I refer you to the DECIDE multicenter clinical study uh, findings that were recently published in Critical Care Medicine.